Hey, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing, man? I'm good, man. Uh, thank you for having me. Absolutely. I uh, appreciate your time. Uh, for the listeners, and this is also going to go on YouTube, by the way, tell us a little bit about your background, how you got to where you are today, all those good things, man. So I, my, I've been doing this since 2006, so uh, it'll be 14 years this summer. So in about a month, it'll be 14 years. And um, my background is in exercise science, kinesiology. Um, I, when I graduated high school in uh, 2003, I originally went to college for criminal justice. And um, Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, pretty much like wasted my first two years of school and, uh, and left and came home and, and got a job working. And I, uh, I kind of just fell into strength training then. And after about a year and a half, I decided to go back to school and I went back to school for exercise science. And, and, um, so, but what were you originally looking to go into? Uh, I wanted to do law Uh and, uh, but when I, when I realized I was not the best, uh, college student in the world, uh, uh, (laughs) studying wise, I realized that law school was probably not in the cards for me. Uh, so the entire time that I was finishing undergrad, uh, my extra science degree, uh, I was still training people. And like I said, I started training people in 2006 and, um, I worked pretty much the entire time that, that, um, that I was in undergrad trying to finish. And, uh, did you work I, out of a commercial gym or I, so I, I started my whole big training career at, at LA fitness up off the Sugarloaf Parkway. Okay. In Atlanta. And uh, it used to be, I don't know anymore, but it, it used to be like the spot was, was Sugarloaf Parkway LA Fitness. And, um, and uh, but then as I kind of gradually, you know, went on through the years, um, I found my way in 2011 to um, a health club down in, in the around the Buckhead area. Okay. And, um, I was there for five years. And that was really kind of the first, I would say, like professional gig as far as coaching and training people goes, because, you know, it was a it was a great way to network uh, because the athletic club where I was at had a a huge network of people. Um, You were able to kind of make a living doing it, Uh, you know, not just getting paid very little for session like in a in a huge commercial gym. and. And, um, and so while I was working there, I I think I told you, like, it's very interesting, like funny story. Um, I graduated college in 2013 and, uh, I, if you, if you didn't know this about me, I, I also used to compete in bodybuilding. I was actually just going to bring that up because I was like, I I was waiting for the moment to say, when did you start that bodybuilding career? For sure. I I started that in 2006 when, uh, before I went back to school, um, I kind of, like I said, I kind of just fell into, I was actually managing a GNC back home and, and kind of just fell into it and, um, kind of got bit by the bodybuilding bug, like everyone says they do. And, uh-huh. uh, and I was like, well, I, you know, I'll try to compete. And so I started in 2006 competing and, and, um, I did a show in 06, 07 and 08, and then basically took off until 2014. And so I was graduating college in December of 2013. Uh, 2014, I had plans of competing one last time. Uh, I had just gotten married in November of 2013. So, you know, I said, I'll go one more time. I'll go like full tilt in and compete one last time and kind of get out of my system, uh, which I did. Thank God. And Mm -hmm. uh, (laughs) so flash forward to when I graduated college in, in 2014, I, uh, I had the opportunity to interview for a job at a sports performance facility here in Georgia. And, um, cause that's what I really wanted to do is, is work with athletes. And, and I had been working with athletes, you know, leading up to graduating college and, and even after graduating college, but that was kind of like my dream job. It was like my dream gig. And, um, I had a buddy who, who worked with them and he kind of got me the end and the interview. And, and, um, I spent probably about a month like shadowing them, uh, 
uh, at their facility and kind of learning how they, they do things and stuff. And, and, um, about a month into it, into shadowing and, and I hadn't been paid anything. I, mm-hmm. I, I was just shadowing and, and just seeing, you know, cause they, they didn't really have a spot for me, mm-hmm. but they wanted to keep open dialect and they wanted me to come in and kind of see how they did things and stuff like that. And, um, and so after about a month of doing that, I had, I had kind of decided that I just wasn't ready to leave uh, my my job where I was, and because uh, I had a lot of clients, um, mm-hmm. I had built a big clientele base, and this was going to be on the in another county, you know, way outside of Atlanta, and um, it was like the next day they called me and they said, "Hey, we've had to let a guy a coach go. Like, we need you now." Oh wow! And I was like, "Well." I'm actually not ready to make the move yet. <laughs> and, wow. And so I, you know, I, I, uh, looking back, do you kind of regret that? Or are you, are you well, happy the way it turned out after it, it worked out the way that it was supposed to, you mm-hmm. know, um, you know, and, and, uh, I, I didn't take that position. And so 2014, I stayed at the health club where I was and, uh, continued to be successful there. And I, I prepped for my last contest, which was going to be in November of 2014. And so I took that whole year to prep, competed. Um, and what, what weight did you get up to? Uh, before, before I started contest prep, I got up to around 200 pounds. Oh, wow. Yeah. Which on, on my frame is exactly pounds is a lot. And, right. it, you know, it's just not comfortable at all. And, and, uh, I competed just to kind of give, you know, just a, a number. I competed at around 160. So, you know, it's, it wasn't very comfortable to walk around for me at 200 pounds. So did you have a coach or did you just kind I, of put your, I did, uh, I actually worked with John Meadows. If you're familiar, uh, with him, uh, mountain dog. Uh, I do not. So mountain dog training is a big. It's big in the bodybuilding. Work. Okay. John, John Meadows is a, a real well-known uh, coach, and um, but the reason why I like him is he uh, he's not just he actually has periodization and and reasoning for his programs. It's not just three sets of ten, three sets of t- you you know what I mean, like a typical right. bodybuilding program. And so, um, but that whole year I was just like, man, I can't believe I turned down this job you know, that was, was my dream job. And, and I just like, I like kicked myself the entire year and we get to 2015, like the January, 2015. And, and, uh, my buddy, I'm, I'm talking to my buddy and I'm like, man, you know, I'm, I can't believe I turned that job down, you know? And, and, uh, he was like, well, maybe, you know, maybe I can go talk to him and, and see about, you know, maybe, uh, getting you an interview again. And I was like, Oh man, that'd be great, you know. Mm-hmm. And and at the time, I had a pretty good amount of athletes that I was working with um, around the Buckhead area, and um, so he kind of stuck his neck out for me with with this this facility again, and and uh, got me another interview again. And and uh, they were very, you know, obviously they were very standoffish. Of about course. It. And right. and um, but they said, you know what, bring it. We'll bring him in and we'll interview him and and. Um, and the way that it was is again, they didn't have a spot for me, but they wanted me to come in and kind of run like their adult like group classes that, okay. that side of the business. And I and I was totally fine, you know, doing that because I love their facility and I, I love their brand and everything like that. And I am literally driving to the interview to talk to the owner and I get a call uh from a an acquaintance of my wife and my, my wife's and, and, uh, he's basically like, Hey, uh, what would you think about like me investing in you and opening your own facility? (laughs) And I was like, well, not going to take this job again. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Yeah. And so I, you know, I went to the interview and, and, you know, hurt, listen to what they said (laughs) and, and they were like, you know, we don't have a spot for you now, you know, but we want you to come and do this. So just think about it. You know, the next week they call me and they're like, we had to let someone go. We need you like now. now. And I was like, 
well, I'm going to be opening my own spot. <laughs> wow. And, and so, you know, that was pretty much, uh, and, and I've, I've talked to those guys since and uh -huh. I mean, everything is fine, but yeah. you know, but, um, it's just interesting the way that things work out. It and, is. um, you know, so 2015, we kind of took that whole year to try to plan for, for what we were going to open. Um, uh, about middle of the year, the, the, uh, the investor that we had, uh, had to pull out unexpectedly and uh, it was myself this is the one that reached out to you yes yes and he had to pull out unexpectedly and which I totally understood his reasoning mm -hmm. um, behind it and uh, so it was myself and my my business partner that were planning this whole thing and he was going to be kind of like the silent partner that was the investor for the two of us and and um, so we were like well you know let's just plan it ourselves and um let's try to do what we can ourselves and and so we took pretty much the whole year of 2015 and and you know you own a business so it's it's not just hey i got this idea and in the next month you've got a business you know um it mm -hmm. takes time and what we, resources did you learn from like early on in this in this process did you just i mean that's that's tough that's that's yeah. a huge deal right there you know, we were we were fortunate enough um, to where we kind of wanted to open, you know, bare bones mm -hmm. as possible. Um, you know, racks. Smart. Yeah, racks, bars, dumbbells, some sleds, and a strip of turf. You know, and that's that's basically what we opened with. And and um, and but we were very lucky um, that one of my clients. Uh, who's still one of my clients now, um, actually he gave us, gave me the money to open the facility and I just paid him back in training. And Man, that's a great deal right there. So, you know, I was really, really lucky and that it worked out like that and fortunate that it worked out like that. And, um, we opened in February, 2016 and, you know, we've been going, we've been going ever since. And, um you've been in there uh you know mm -hmm. we opened that with the first side was all that we had which was about 4600 square feet which is pretty big and um yeah. and then in 2018 we knocked out a portion of the wall and we moved over into uh the space next door and took on about a, an additional 37 3800 square feet so yeah if any listeners for sure are in the Atlanta area, you definitely got to check out the Rack Performance. I mean, definitely a beautiful facility. I mean, definitely uh, one of the best I've seen ever, really. So obviously, yeah, definitely check it out. But yeah. And, um, you know, so we've been a little over four years now and gradually growing the business. We started out and it was just the two of us. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we were we brought over a pretty big chunk of our clientele base uh, from where we were working previously. Okay. And so we kind of came into it with clients already. And which is, I think the smart way to do it. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I definitely think that being the top guy at someone else's facility for, for new coaches is the best thing to do initially. Because had I just had no experience fresh out of college and just decided to go out on my own and open my own place, I had no clue what I was doing um, as far as networking, as far as any. And I'm, I'm not the smartest business person um, around. And so, you know, I was that top guy at someone else's facility for five years you know, and, and built up my clientele base and built the following. And then once I was ready to open my own spot, I had a following that, that came with me. And what, what was the barrier? I mean, did you just kind of crunch on numbers? Like, Hey, you know, I have X amount of clients, I'm making this much per month. Um, I'm ready to go. Or was it, how, how did you calculate that entire move? I think, I think people, uh, especially strength coaches or, you know, personal trainers, I think it comes down to comfort and, you know, you're comfortable if you're doing well where you're at and you have your schedule and you're able to kind of, you know, live your life 
and have your schedule and you have this comfort level and you don't necessarily want to make a change. And, but there was, there was a moment, um, where, and, and it was pretty much when I found out that I was going to be a dad for the first time where I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta do something. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, cause I'm, I'm working, I'm killing myself for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And why not do it for myself? And, you know, and that's, that's a whole nother topic where, you know, people think if you, if you work for yourself, you know, it's this great thing and you have, and, and it is, but mm -hmm. you know, it's not this pot of gold at this, at the end of a rainbow where it's like, you have all this free time just cause you work for yourself. It's, it's the, it's the opposite. It is opposite. And, and I can remember being at the health club and just having like 25 clients a week and being like, Oh my God, I'm so busy. Like, I don't know how I could work anymore, you know, and flash forward to where I'm seeing, I'm doing between 60 and 70 sessions a week on top, not on top of trying to run a business and grow a business. All the admin, the marketing, all of those things. Yeah. And so, you know, but it's, it's the world has a weird way of working out the exact way that it was supposed to, you know, and, um, and, um, you know, we're just now coming back from, we were closed for six weeks, uh, quarantine and everything like that. And we're, um, we're more of a private facility to begin with. And, and so we, we've opened up and we're just training clients. So we're by appointment only right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're probably going to be that way for a little, for a little while. Yeah. 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 Understand? How did your uh, business model like evolve over the period of time? I mean, did you have that kind of men mentality of, you know, when you opened up your own spot, it was mostly personal training, or did you try to start to run? I know around that time where you know boot camp stuff was very take kind of taking off. Yeah. How did how did that evolve over time, and then kind of how do you have it now these days? I I never wanted I didn't want to do a class uh, kind of like setting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because our, our thing is, is we wanted to, we wanted to work with athletes mm -hmm. in a one-on-one -on -one setting <clears throat> or a small group setting. And so that's kind of how the business started with a lot of, it actually started with a lot of one-on-ones because the majority of our clients, our clientele were one-on-ones. And, um, and even now it's, it's just evolved into still one-on-ones, um, small group coaching, um, and uh and programming you know writing programming for for clients and um we do have a membership base um you know a lot of our clients have the membership because when we write programming we write based off of what we have in the gym mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um but that's something that we've never really the membership side of the business we've never really pushed a lot um just because we like that that private feeling and you know people come to us because of that private feeling you know and um when you have your small groups are they are they all on the same program or they have you know, kind of custom ones yeah so when we get someone in we take them through an assessment whether mm -hmm. they're a general population client or they're an athlete um you know an assessment is i think if you're not doing an assessment then you're kind of doing a disservice uh to mm -hmm. the person is about to work with you. Um, so everything is written based off of that assessment. Um, you know, if it's an athlete, we might do, um, <clears throat> see if they're more, uh, you know, if they're stronger or if they're, uh, you know, more springy and we'll kind of let that determine how we program for them. Um, you know, we'll look at same thing everyone else does ankles, knees, hips, shoulders, you know, we'll program that way as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not just us. Everyone kind of has their own folder and we're, we're going through their program. So even if you're in a group, um, like sometimes I'll have, you know, a group of, you know, 12, 15 high school basketball players from, from one high school, each of them, there's a lot of similarities and, you know, and, and, um, similar components in their program, but a lot of them need, you know, maybe 10 to 15% you know, individualization. And, um, and we're able to do that, uh, you know, because we're able to kind of keep the numbers down to where I'd, I don't have to have like 30 and 40 people 
you know what I mean? Right. And right. Uh, so we, we go through their program. Um, they're keeping up with their program while we're coaching them. Uh, so it's not like I'm having to go through and write everything. In. They're going through and writing everything in. And, and Perfect. You know, I put the responsibility on them. And uh, Exactly what we do as well. I think it's the best fit, honestly. Um, so this last, I want to say this last six months, uh, you've kind of taken over, is it six months that you just completely taken over the business that um, you were since, now? Since September. So it's almost been a year. A year. Okay. Almost. So, so you bought out a business partner and now you are taking over completely. Yeah. 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 How has that transition been? Um, it's, it's been challenging. Um, and it's, it's tough, but it's also it's also the best thing that I've done, honestly. And uh, um, we have uh, our I have four coaches that work for me, um, mm -hmm. so five of us total. And um, you know, I, I think everyone always has the best of intentions. You know, when you go into things like this, mm -hmm. and people change. You know, and, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, but at the end of the day, I knew that, you know, this business, this was my life and, and my life's work. And I knew that I wanted it to be a certain way. And I knew, you know, that I was going to have to basically, you know, buy out a partner to, to continue going that way. And, and, um, and that's what we did. And, you know, now everything kind of falls on me in terms of, um, like you said, business admin stuff, uh, mm -hmm. you know, building the brand and everything like that. And it's, it's very challenging, uh, cause I also have two young kids too. And so, but it's, 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 it's the most rewarding though, because it's, you're putting in a hundred percent of your effort and you're not having to worry about anybody else. And, and you know, so what is some like pieces of advice that you'd give somebody, especially like a younger coach who plans to, you know, work with a business partner and kind of go into something together? What are some things that you wish you should tell them to look for, like little signs early on that, hey, maybe you should just either do this on your own or, you know, or you shouldn't be a business owner in general. Or, yeah, you'd be a good fit to have somebody else kind of there as your sidekick, you know, you're the Robin to your Batman kind of thing. I would say if, you know, if you're thinking about opening a business and you're not willing to work as much as many hours and work as much as it's going to take to get the thing going, you don't want to own a business. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a 40 hour a week job. Mm -hmm. uh, so a, a lot of times it's 80 plus hour a week. Jay, and that's, and you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's not an exaggeration. It's not. Uh, and if you're not willing to do that, I don't think you should, you know, go into owning a business. Um, if, you, if you have, I, I would say if you could do it yourself, I think it's better just because you, you know the way that you want it and you know the vision that you have for it. And a lot of times when there's a lot of different people, you know, with a lot of different opinions, mm -hmm. uh, it, it kind of, it can slow processes down a little bit and, and that's fine too. You know, mm -hmm. um, the, the main thing I would say if, if someone is, is wanting to uh, have a business partner and make sure that they're willing to have the same amount of skin in the game as you do um, and make sure that they're, you're both on the same page as far as understanding like, Hey, if we got to work a hundred, we, we got to work 100 hours a week, you know, and, um, you know, because at the end of the day, it's if, if you have a partner and you're owning a business like it's up to the two of you and no one else, you know. And so if if your one can't be doing more than the other, in my opinion, and it work. How, how important are contracts? Pretty important. <laughs> <laughs> pretty important you know um and um you know i i wouldn't um people ask me if i would go back and change it i wouldn't go back and change anything you know um i would just be a little smarter um you know with how we did it and uh but definitely have something in writing 
you know. Yeah. Anybody listening, got to get everything in writing without a doubt. And that's, that's, yeah, that's why I asked you that for sure. Uh, how, how does, you know, having a business, how does it affect your family life? I, how, how many kids do you have now? We have two. Two. Uh, yeah. So they're, they're about to come barreling in the front door here in a second. Yeah. Well, um, nice. I've got a, I got a four year old and a one year old and, um, it's tough, man. Um, because, you know, when I'm, when I'm working, you know, 70 hours a week just in training and then and I'm, you know, so I got to be Superman mm-hmm. at work. And then when I come home and I, be dad. I mean, I got to be super dad at home mm-hmm. and because kids don't care, you know, they don't understand, they don't understand that you're tired, you know, they just understand that you're home mm-hmm. and, 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 um, you know, missing things, uh, missing events. Um, that's, that's a hard part of it, you know, and, and it's, you just kind of have to resolve yourself to, it's not always going to be like that. You know, you put in the time and you put in the work and hopefully you build a team around you where you can put people <clears throat> in charge and put people in places where as a business owner, you can become just more of the face of the business, you know, and build the business while what's what's the saying uh to work on the business not as much in the business yeah exactly and um and so that's kind of the that's kind of where i'm at right now mm-hmm. and it's, it's tough for me because you know like i said this is my life's work mm-hmm. and i'm i'm a workaholic and like mm-hmm. i want to touch everything and it's tough for like a personality type like me to kind of back away from stuff and let someone else do it. And, um, you know, hard. it is. And, and I was trying to get really good at that before, you know, the whole COVID thing hit and, and, um, you know, but we are where we are now and, and, mm-hmm. uh, we're going to make it work. So for sure. I mean, the most difficult thing by far, I think, is is dealing with employees or dealing with trainers and trying to build a team and get everybody on the same page. That by far is the most most difficult thing for I think for most gym owners that I talk to. It's not the obviously it's not the programming. Yeah. It's not even you know getting equipment. Like we love that stuff. It's the yeah dealing with different personality types and 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 trying to do that. And that's why I think your insight is perfect because. Oftentimes, you know, when a young trainer, their their dream is to open up a gym. So yeah. when they hear from, you know, seasoned vets like yourself, yeah. maybe they do really think about it and say, hey, like maybe opening up my own gym isn't the best thing, but I could be a really good number two guy for somebody else. Yeah. Two guy or gal for someone else, probably make even more money and and yeah. have a little bit more freedom. And that is okay. Um, there they are. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good, man. It's all good. Um, so, yeah, no, I appreciate your feedback for sure. What are kind of your, your future plans in the next, you know, three to five years? Where do you see what you're doing? Where, where's the vision at? Um, you know, the plan is, the plan hasn't changed at all in terms of, you know, continuing to build the business. Um, I, I've i said it a lot of times, like, I, I, want, I want it to be almost like a destination, you know, where success to me has never been about the amount of money that mm-hmm. I make. Success to me is when I have clients and I have athletes that are coming from all over, coming to see us because, you know, it's where the, we, they've been told that, you know, we're who they need. You're to the spark. Yeah. 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 And that, that's to me, that is success to me. So, um, you know, the plan is to continue to build that and, um, and, and that's really it, you know, uh, continue to get good people in place. Uh-huh. Um, you know, we have, we have four really good coaches. Um, and, um, you know, I'm always, I'm always looking to, to interview more and, uh-huh. uh, you know, especially it's, it's going to be a really interesting rest of this year, you know, because I think a lot of trainers, I think there's going to be a lot of trainers looking for jobs. Um, whether, you know, they've been let go from from a position or whether their clients aren't comfortable going back to a, a position, you know, at a bigger gym. And, um, you know, you and I had this conversation before. And I, I think private facilities um, are are going to continue to thrive. 
mm-hmm. more so than the big, you know, chain gyms. And, um, you know, because people, we're able to control the numbers a little bit more. And, and I think uh, for people coming out of this thing, I think that's going to be important, um, you know, just for their, their mindset. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm always, uh, we're always willing to talk to people and interview people and, and, um, and see if they're a good fit. Awesome. So. Awesome. Man, I appreciate your time, man. I really do. I won't keep you any longer. But uh, what are some ways that people can reach out to you if they have any more questions about, you know, your history? I think you've given so many nuggets. I'm going to definitely send this to my crew back in Albuquerque. Yeah. Um, how can they contact you if they have any more questions or if they want to shoot even interview with you? Yeah, um, the best way to contact me um, is just email, honestly. And it's just ed at the rack, apc.com. Um, and, um, you know, I'll check Instagram and stuff like that. And I'm not the bet you, you know, I'm not the best <laughs> technology. And, uh, and so I might be a little slow responding to like a DM or something like that. But uh, the best way to get a hold of me is just uh, email. Or if you're in the area, I tell coaches this all the time. Like our door is never closed, um, you know, for anyone that wants to come and see what we do, that wants to come and learn. Um, you know, I, I, I think, um, I think one of the best things that you, we can do as a, as an industry is learn from one another and, and collaborate. And, yeah. I mean, the guy down the street, if he wants to come in and see what I do, I, that's perfectly fine with me. Like, mm-hmm. you know, come in, we can talk shop because I don't, I don't view other people. Like if they're doing well, I don't view it as, well, I'm not doing that well. You know what I mean? And like, if I'm doing well, everyone can do well, you know? And, and that's just the way I I really hope coming out of this thing, like the strength and conditioning industry and the training industry can kind of, can kind of do more stuff like this where, where different businesses can collaborate with one another and just really realize that we're not all competition. For sure. No, we should definitely be collaborating. And that's what, you know, obviously I appreciate you being on our platform. Yeah. Uh, means a lot, without a doubt, to have somebody of your expertise and knowledge on there to have uh, help and add value to other people. So I, I really appreciate that, man. Um, I think it's cool that someone can kind of gonna step back and kind of wave another a different banner that they're maybe they're not used to and have other coaches from, you know, different cities, different states, countries kind of just come together and and help each other out i think it's freaking awesome and i know that you're in a tough spot as far as like you're so busy with what you got going on but you know you know the value of you know being able to to have online training be able to coach people remotely and and be able to to build an online business so i think that's awesome man so i appreciate you dude yeah thank you man i appreciate you having me yeah we'll we'll, uh we'll get on a few more of these for sure awesome yeah i'm looking forward to it all right man thank you so much for your time yeah all right